Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Saturday, December 22nd, midnight. Yes, we're in it. Midwest Blizzard lining up for December 26th, 7th, and 8th. And a white Christmas blanketing the West, as we've been warning all week. That's a good thing. Because we're not talking epic amounts of snow, except for the Sierras and the Cascades. As we've been warning about, it'll be fine. It's winter. You've done it before. Keep calm. It's boom time. Pre-Christmas storm could bring foot of snow to Oregon passes. A weather system running Saturday night to Monday, Christmas Eve, is expected to bring at least a foot of snow, possibly more, to the mountain high passes in Oregon's Cascade Range. It's going to be a white Christmas in Oregon's mountains. The question, as ever, is exactly how much snow ends up falling on Oregon roadways during one of the year's biggest travel times and what type of nightmare that will bring. A weather system running Saturday night to Monday, Christmas Eve, is expected to bring at least a foot of snow and possibly more to high mountain passes in Oregon's Cascades. And that's tonight's first snow boom to knowledge. Heads up. Snow levels below Santiam and Willamette Passes elevations through Monday. Through your Monday, government camp, Santiam Pass, Willamette. Check it out. Saturday, heavy snow everywhere. Into your Sunday, government camp should see a rain-snow mix. Periods of light snow in Santiam Pass, Willamette. Periods of light snow. And then another round of heavy snow kicks in on your Monday. We'll check it out. Snow and windy conditions through your AM Saturday. West Virginia and Virginia. Governor, say it ain't so. Yes, it's snow. Winter weather advisory, 6 p.m. tonight through 4 p.m. Saturday. Fayette Rally, Summers, Wyoming, Mercer, McDowell, Tazewell, Buck Buchanan. Here's the forecast, 3 to 6 from Marlinton through Raynell down into Beckley. I mean, we can't make it up. That's south of Charleston. Are you picking it up? Flood watch is in effect for eastern Raleigh and eastern Fayette counties through Friday afternoon. High winds tonight. Wind advisory Friday 6 p.m. Eastern time until Saturday noon. For all of the brown areas, which are more like tan or mauve, temps tonight will fall into the 20s. Snow will gradually end through Saturday morning. Most of our area will receive 1 to 3 less East of I-77, the highest terrain from the Bluefield to Lewisburg could see 2 to 4, locally higher amounts possible. Western Greenbrier and Pocahontas could see 3 to 8, starting late Friday afternoon through Saturday. Slick travel, blowing snow, down trees, power issues, river flooding from the wet weather will remain at least localized concerns into tonight and early Saturday. Be careful, especially if you're traveling 3 to 6, like I said, from Marlinton South through Beckley. Raynell, heads up. Ground zero. I'm no queero. Snow to create added travel headaches in parts of the Appalachians Friday. Let's check out the apocalypse now. Look at those tights. Fantastic outfit. Heads up. <laughs> A swath of snow will create slick travel over parts of the Appalachians and onto the backside of the rainstorm. During your Friday night, a storm with torrential rain caused flooding and travel disruptions along much of the Atlantic seaboard prior to the end of this week. As colder air invades the storm on its backside, a wintry mix or even accumulating wet snow may fall for a time over parts of the Midwest, but more so over the western slopes of the Appalachians during Friday night, according to AccuWeather senior meteorologist Alex Snusnowski. Snow returns Friday night, slippery spots, travel disruption, brisk winds behind the storm. Lots of pink areas. Heads up. 
at this time the highest elevations of West Virginia, West Central PA, as well as much of Western New York stand the highest probability of receiving a few to as many as six inches of wet, white, global warming goodness Friday night. Hey, that's now! Motorists heading over the ridges are likely to encounter slushy to snow-covered roads right now as I bloviate. Snow Snowski said as Diamond was bloviating. Snowfall Friday night, Saturday a.m. Slippery travel, AccuWeather Storm Max 12 inches whatever that means there's not 12 inches anywhere here but three to six expected through a spine yes of the eastern west virginia high mountains heads up lake effect yeah western pa western new york they know how to grow pork Download the free accuweather app and blah 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 portions of interstate 70 75 80 90 that lie within the threat zone may be covered in snow at some point now or later now. In the wake of the storm on Saturday, a pocket of chilly air, because it's snowing, will follow with a brief period of lake effect snow that may pester locations downwind of the Great Lakes, especially Erie and Ontario, Snow Snowski said. Yeah. Blustery winds, spotty snow to aim for Great Lakes, northeastern U.S., up to Christmas Eve. Heads up, look at the blue spot, mostly covering all of eastern Quebec, portions of western Ontario. I would be scary out. Hey, Ottawa, hey, we predicted this seven days ago, and our predictions are coming to tr true. Because temperatures up in that region are 0 to 10 degrees. Anything that falls there will fall as snow. Ho, ho. Real feel temps. Western uh, New York State. Chilly. Western PA. Dipping down into Western Maryland. And just a tippy touch into your West Virginia. While actual high temperatures might not seem to be hard to take. Real field temps are likely to range from the lower teens near the Canadian border to near the freezing mark around Chesapeake and Delaware Bays. Whew, that's chilly. Potential for snow is epic. We're talking D.C. up through Boston. Saturday, storm departs. Heavy snows developing western PA, Lake Effect, western New York State, and uh, upper M Vermont is going to receive a wintry mix and a hellish nightmare of ice and other things. Since the ground is so soggy after the recent rainstorm and the wet year in general, record wet year, 100-year uh, records being broken everywhere, up to 8 feet of rain in some areas on the East Coast being reported. The possibility of sporadic trees coming down will take power lines with them. So we're going to be watching outages. Lake effect snow will follow the period of snow on the tail end where the storm from Friday night now to the western slopes of the Appalach where the lake effect snow will persist. Several inches will accumulate. More snow Sunday through your Monday up and through most of <coughs> New York State, uh, PA. Uh, once you get up into the Lehigh Valley in North, you're looking for slippery roads, travel disruptions. I-95 will dry out Monday p.m. Some areas from Michigan to Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Maryland, PA, New Jersey, Delaware, Northern Virginia, New York State, and New England have the potential to receive a coating of snow from the storm by way of a snow shower or two, which could lead to a nightmare if you're driving. Areas from Michigan to the central northern Appalachians have a greater chance of picking up an inch or two. Motorists venturing along I-75, I-76, I-79, I-80, I-81, I-87, and I-90 from late Sunday to Monday may be totally fluxed. Whew. Say that like five times fast. Now, Al Gore and other charlatans have warned us for up to five to seven years now that we would never see snow again. Global warming is the culprit. It's your fault and CO2 is rising. Temperatures were burning up. The ocean's going to wash you away. This coming out today from Science News. Dust threatens Utah's greatest snow on Earth. Has nothing to do with you. Has everything to do with dust. Declining water levels in the Great Salt Lake contribute to snow melt and dusty conditions, which lead to high reflectivity and the heating of the snow. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. It's not your fault. It's the dust. 
Let's check out your ho 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 Santa day by day 24 hour snowfall forecast through your Christmas Eve. Let's bring it back. Here we are now. Heavy snows moving into British Columbia on the coast. The Olympics and the Northern Cascades, Washington State, all of Idaho. It's snowing in 24 hours. All of Idaho, there will be snow in 24 hours. <clears throat> As we enter the Christmas Eve day, check out your white Christmas. If you're in blue, snow will be falling. And as we enter Christmas Day, that snow will move down into the Sierras with heavy accumulations up to a foot in some areas. Most of Nevada will see a white Christmas, maybe even Las Vegas. Day after Christmas, storm moves into the Four Corners region, totally pummeling everything. Day after Christmas, we will be white. We have snow on the ground now. I'm not worried about it, but it will be beautiful. In my region, Durango, Pagosa Springs, we're going to get it. And then this moves all the way down into Mexico. Take a look. And then a modest blizzard moving through the upper Midwest. Nebraska is going to get hit hard. South Dakota moving through Minnesota, up into northern Michigan, and into southern Canada into the new year. Heads up. It's looking delicious. Let's put it all together so you know what it means. And we'll let it run. Christmas Eve. Christmas Day. Day after Christmas. December 27th. The 28th. 29th. 30th. The bell is dropping. Are you in Times Square? New Year's! That was exciting. Let's do it again. Stop. Pause it. Boom. Through your New Year's. Now we're talking 10-day forecast. That's a lot of water. It's no water equivalent. Let's go to the European forecast. I'm sorry, I know the news. But Denmark is about to get it. They've been lacking snow, but in the next 48 hours, all of Denmark, including Copenhagen, are about to get some snow. And that's a ho-ho. Heavy snow in Norway. Heavy snow throughout all of Russia. All of Eastern Europe. Snow building in the Alps. But Western Europe is going to stay dry all the way through the new year. Modest snow up in northern UK developing through the new year. Nothing out of the ordinary. What's out of the ordinary is to the east. The east that is getting buried like the beast. Take a look at these totals. Boom! 42 centimeters in many areas. That's a half a meter. Over a hundred in many areas down in the south here. We have numbers that are off the charts in the hundreds, 54, 84 dashes. So heavy snows falling everywhere across the northern hemisphere. Record snows as we enter winter, which began just seven hours ago. Ho, ho, ho. Massive hailstorm hits Sydney. ICA declares a catastrophe. I have no idea what that picture is, except he's got some hard stuff over his head because he's going to get pummeled. Multiple severe thunderstorms hit the Australian state of New South Wales, including capital Sydney on the 20th, dropping tennis ball size hail and causing huge damage. This is one of five storms over the last week. As predicted, cosmic ray flux, electric universe much, we predicted increased hail size as in the historic documentation occurred back in the Dalton and other minimums. Hail the size 8, 10 inches will be the norm. And if you're caught without a helmet, heads up. Emergency services said the worst hailstorm hit the city since 1999. When we knew how to party back then. While the Insurance Council of Australia said that they were almost bankrupt. More than 25,000 claims were already made and losses are more than 125 million. Early estimates accounted. Seismic update. <laughs> 
Yo, this is fun. 15 minutes, three seconds in. Massive uptick worldwide. Thankfully, no big boomers. 5.5 in Zimbabwe. Are you kidding me? Heads up. Rift Valley much? The earth is spreading. Yeah. Huge flurry of activity down here in Carnes, Texas. Alvor, Texas. Picos. It's as if they're injecting all the toxins into the ground right now. As fast as possible. Aftershocks up in the Kamchatka. Moderate uptick throughout Indonesia. And we have the East African Rift Zone spreading before your very lives. And that is certainly a boom. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Duke Kono, Continuous Volcanic Ash, Fuego, Shivalush, Sakolejima, Sabancaya, Santiago, Possible Volcanic Ash, Exhalation. Man, that word is a fascination. Fuego, Ongoing Volcanic Ash, Sabancaya, Sporadic Puff, Sakolejima, Volcanic Ash, Shivalush, Eruption, confirmed 21st today. Fuego, Krakatoa, and others. Let's go over to Iceland. We have another flurry yesterday of earthquakes close to Fagradashfjall mountain on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Largest earthquake in the swarm had a magnitude of 3.2. Not showing up on USGS, the fraud mongers. Downgrade service wouldn't have any of these nine earthquakes above 2.5 that they should have. But the uptick on the spreading mid-ocean ridge through Iceland is happening. As well as Zimbabwe. Etna Multiview Volcano YT. We can see lava in the daytime spewing. As the uptick continues, Sakurajima apparently erupting now live. Let's increase the resolution if we can get a solution here. Give me a second. We're about to get some good stuff. Guess what? John Clarkson was finally banned from NOAA. You can see here me, David Mariello, one of the people that like this page. But we have warned you numerous times, Mr. Clarkson, on this and other posts, that you are violating our comment policy. That if you continue, we will ban you from participating. Since you continue to spread false information regarding climate science, he's spreading information about the sun and the grand solar minimum. Which, by the way, is not false information. It is actual information. It is actual facts, Noah. I am hereby banning you from our page because you are not following Noah's narrative. John... Noah banned John Clarkson. Noah, this is a government funded, your taxes banned a citizen from his First Amendment rights. Not only that, this supposed scientific group, Noah, claims that the Grand Solar Minimum is fake information. That the waning magnetosphere is fake information. That the sun shutting down right now into grand solar minimum, the eddy minimum, is fake information. That the sun has nothing to do with the climate because you do, John. You bitch. And we're banning you. Pay your taxes. Here we are. Amazing resolution. Popo on the bottom left. Sakurajima erupting live 3.07 p.m. UTC, which is now, which is about, I don't know, midnight, mountain time? I don't know what time it is. I lost all concept. Here we see a nice volcanic flow. Kuchinoraba, which erupted yesterday, is puffing. Shinmodake creating its own weather. Asama has been quiet for a while. Tori Alba is doing, doing its thing. No visibility. And now for four straight years, almost every single day, Sakurajima helping cool the planet.
Let's do this. Have you heard? California considering tax on breathing. I can't make this up, except it's fake. Sacramento, California, the California legislature unveiled plans last week for a new tax on the privilege of breathing. He's serious, and he barely breathes because he's trying to save the planet. See how healthy he looks? The Check Your Oxygen Privilege Act will be voted on later this week. If passed into law, Californians will pay a progressive tax on inhaling oxygen in order to live and exhaling carbon dioxide with wealthier residents paying as much as 40% of their income for every breath they take. The poorest tax bracket may receive a subsidy for their breaths under the new model. Once again, California is at the forefront of progress. Jerry Brown said in a press conference Monday, we've talked about taxing, text messages, vehicle mileage, sneezing, sleeping, and your very existence. And this was the next logical step breathing. The government has reportedly developed a special breathing meters to help the implement the bill. Should it pass, Californians will be forced to purchase the meters from the state at the cost of around $47,000 and wear them at all times to ensure accurate measurement from the amount of air they're actually using. So, breaking news, California considering a tax on breathing, which is fake. This is not fake. This is science. Doing briste at Don Patrick Head. <coughs> what you're looking at is a C stack. A C stack of sedimentary rocks, which I've studied my entire life. The thicker, more massive units here that are tan in this region and even up here are limestones. And then the thin interbedded areas here, even this unconformity, which we'll talk about here, this scour mark, amazing. These are black shales. Black shales form in deep water environments and then these limestones are shallow, tropical environments. Deep, black, shallow, buff. But before we get to that, let's introduce you to the area. Enjoy. These archaeological ruins on top, right here. Look at this. Do you see that? It's insane. Those are tens of thousands of years old. There's no way this erosion could have happened in less time. But I'm about to prove it to you. 
Standing proud and alone, this magnificent sea stack is the crown of Dom Patrique, the Bali Castle County, Mayo. The stunning location in North Mayo is where millions of years of geologic formation meets folklore legend. History, both ancient and modern, including World War II and the birth of Christianity in Ireland. Now, what you're not being told is that in order for you to erode this away from the mainland, based on what I'm about to show you, could even be tens of thousands of years. Not only that, I want to introduce you to Milankovitch cycles and how they express themselves in the rock record. These rocks you're looking at are Carboniferous, where most of the coal measures happened. There was a huge rainforest on Earth. Tens of millions of different plant species. And the sedimentary environments that are located here are shallow marine, tropical limestone, and deep marine black shale. Black shale, limestone, black shale. Shallow, deep, shallow, deep, shallow, deep, shallow, deep. What you're looking at is the Chan Thomas Adam and Eve story again and again and again. In fact, from this large limestone to this large limestone is in fact 400,000 years and so on. These are super cycles. And then there's 100,000 year cycles in between that we call glacial cycles. So this deepening event on top of this limestone here, deepening is the 100,000 year event. And then again up here, 100,000 year event. And then again up here, the 100,000 year event. And then down here, the 100,000 year event. And then this scour is the 100,000 year event. The deepening on top of that limestone that got cut away in the first of this epic 100,000 year cycle. These Milankovitch cycles have been happening time immemorial. Now, we're looking at a period of 320 million years ago when this was deposited. Now, But I want to talk about the erosion, the modern geologic erosion, which led to this sea stack. And on the flyby, you saw the archaeological ruins on the top of the stack. And I want to show you what 50 years does to the stack. Absolutely nothing. In 50 years, there is no erosion and no change. So that means that in 500 years, there's probably no erosion or change either. 500 years. This same piece of shale here is still sticking out right here. 50 years later. This piece of shale right here is still right there. The rock that was sitting on the ledge here is now gone. I don't know who took that. <laughs> but what I'm trying to show you here is there's been no erosion in 50 years. So in 500 years, minimal erosion. They're claiming that these ruins were connected to the surface just a thousand years ago. But it's my geological opinion, this seamount is only here because of tens of thousands of years of erosion. Tens of thousands. Which means that tens of thousands of years ago, before modern civilization, there was modern civilization on top of this seamount. Now, if you watched the video earlier with Bill Wettstein, former student, now colleague, professional geologist, been working in the field for decades. We learned about the pack hypothesis back in the 90s. Punctuated aggradational cycles. This is based on the Milankovitch hierarchy of cyclicity. And the red lines are major boundaries. 100,000 year boundaries. The blue lines are the precession of the equinoxes. The 26,000 year great year. These are some of Bill's interpretations of the stack. Now, I went ahead and made some graphics so that you can understand what we're talking about. The blue lines represent the blue curve here. 
This is the precession of the equinoxes. This is solar insulation based on the sun, solar radiation, which drives climate. <laughs> it drives the temperature. So the blue line is the sun. Related specifically to the Milankovitch cycles. Every 26,000 years, there's a great year, which you can see here from insulation. And it is modulated every 100,000 years by the orbital eccentricity, also Milankovitch. So the red spikes are the 100,000 year cycles. The blue spikes are the great years. And the pink is the raw data. I can't make it any clearer than this. In fact, this is probably the best graphical representation of Milankovitch that exists in the entire literature as of today. Because not only does it show that there are predicted five cycles per 100,000 years, one, two, three, four, five, but it is also shown in the geologic record that sometimes there's only four. Bill knows what I'm talking about. And here we have one, two, three, four in this 100,000 year cycle. But clearly you can see an extra blip in here. So the raw data starts to blend together in some s situations climatically during a drop down. And we're about to enter the next drop down. What I want you to notice is the first drop off of each cycle at the 100,000 year mark is epic. Temperature in this drops 9 degrees C. This one, 10 degrees C. And the one we're on, another 10 degrees C. It should be 9 or 10. It takes about 1,400 years for that to happen. But the chaos that will ensue in your lifetime is provable. That's why I have the channel. That's why I'm teaching you this science. We're going to get into more detail with this with Bill in the next interview we do, New Year's Eve. Milankovitch Countdown Live, New Year's Eve at Oppenheimer Ranch. That's a big boom. That's going to be the best New Year's Eve that you've ever spent a dollar on. Let's parse this up. Heads up. Take a look at the aurora. We just found out something. Someone is trying to manipulate our atmosphere. Here it is, kids. The big reveal. The first joint experimental results between Sora and CSES. This is just coming out 12 days ago. In June 2018, for the first time, the Sora heating facility in Russia, which is HARP, together with the in-orbit China Seismo Electromagnetic Satellite, CSES, carried out a series of experiments in emitting high-frequency O-mode radio waves to disturb our ionosphere. Did they ask your permission? They didn't ask mine. This paper reports data from those experiments which affected the entire planet, by the way, without your knowledge. I'm going to leave you links to this paper because this is absolutely egregious. And it is a crime against you and humanity. They're experimenting with the entire planet without your permission. While you were sleeping, drinking coffee, binging on Netflix, or otherwise unaware of what's happening in the atmosphere, China and Russia were experimenting with it behind your back. Nobody knows why scientists from the two countries joined forces to perform these tests, and they didn't ask permission from the world. But there is speculation that these experiments, which involved heating the ionosphere, had something to do with the military. The real reason remains unknown. The results were recently published, which I'm sharing with you. Do your due diligence and read this paper. It is very disturbing what is going on 
before your very lives. NASA asteroid warning. Radar image reveals monster asteroid on Earth approach tonight. It's a big one. This baby is a mile wide. If an object like this hit the ocean, that would be the first day of the rest of your life. 60% of the population would be missing. And those that remained, 90% would just be wandering. An insane mental illness caused by the calamity. Shock. Nibiru is not causing... Gatwick Airport to shut down. It's a bunch of idiots with drones and now they're arrested. So if you watch any channels talking about uh, Planet X shutting down Gatwick Airport, who's the idiot? More facts. U.S. stocks suffer the worst week, not only in a decade, but the worst December since the Great Depression. And there's more down today. Cryptocurrencies up. Precious metals are going to go up. Buy silver. Do it now before you're out. If you have $1,000, put it in silver. Bury it in the ground. If you live on the east coast of the United States, check out Crowley Farms' website. Been a friend of the channel from the RIP. Real people. Real solutions. Real food. Real recipes. <laughs> Just a real nice website to visit if you want the facts about food in zone five through nine. Hope you got something out of the video. Happy holidays. We all have problems. Don't bury them. Bring them out. Work out solutions. Resentments will kill you. I know. Acceptance is the key. Join us. Free your mind. Be safe. We love you. That's a boom.